Hey, what's going on today, guys? It's Trey. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are here at Horopolis and we are here at Pamukkale, two of Turkey's most popular tourist attractions. So we're going to be spending our entire day here. There's lots to see and do. I know I'm actually wearing shorts and a t-shirt, but we are really high in elevation and it is extremely chilly out right now. We're really excited to be here. So without further ado, stay tuned. Let's get into it. So because we do have the Turkish Museum Pass, entrance to both Hierapolis and Pamukkale are included. Just to let you guys know, there is more than just Hierapolis and the terrace is here. There is so much to see and do. Pamukkale, which has been used as a spa since the second century BC, literally translates to cotton castle in Turkish. The travertine features have their origins in the shifting of a fault in the valley of the Menderes River. As the fault shifted, very hot springs with a very high mineral content arose at this location. Apart from the slightly radioactive minerals, the calcium and hydrogen carbonate react to create calcium carbonate and limestone. This is what gives Pamukkale its whiteness and created the very pools that we see today. Located right over my shoulder are the world famous travertine terraces. Sadly, they aren't filled with water. I think a little bit down the way, there are a few that are filled with water, but the main area right here, sadly, the pools are empty. But this is a regular occurrence, especially this time of the year. It's really awesome. And in case you guys were wondering where the water comes from, this is one of the main sources where the water actually comes from. It just flows down this little ravine into the pools. All right, we actually found a place where we can get in, guys. Man, I thought the water was supposed to be warm. It's crazy. It's definitely not too warm. So I'm about ankle deep in the water right now. And it's weird. It's like certain pools that you step in, it's cold. Certain pools you step in, it's hot. But Wow, this is awesome. I really didn't think in November I would be able to get in the water in Europe, but this is really awesome, guys. This is really special. These waters have really great healing powers. And honestly, I wish I could submerge myself in completely because my back is destroyed. <laughs> guys this is amazing wow so about like almost knee deep in the water right now this water is actually warm compared to the other water this is awesome Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. this hurts so bad ah. Ooh, ah. this place is 110% worth it. So it was pretty chilly when we first came in, but now that the day has gotten, but now it feels really nice out. Do it, buddy, do it. Do it. I just still can't believe that we're here. It's like I'm here and I'm able to touch the wall. I can touch the water. So cool, so cool. So I feel really bad right now because I'm being a wimp and standing over here on the edge because the water's freezing and everybody else is being a lot tougher than I am. <laughs> All right, guys, I felt bad for you. I couldn't have them come out here in the freezing cold water alone, so I decided to give it a try. But wow, I can't feel my feet right now or my ankles. I can't feel my feet. So I decided to let my feet and my ankles defrost. The water is just way too cold for me personally. I wanted to just let you guys know that besides this place, you know, being a UNESCO heritage site, historically, this is one of the most important sites in all of Turkey and honestly in all of the world. And in fact, the ancient Romans and the ancient Greeks 
frequently visited this area. It was a very popular tourist attraction back in the day. And it's just been a place that people all over the world have come. And for good reason, the water has amazing healing properties. And depending on the time of year that you come, you will get a chance to experience some amazing warm water. And as I mentioned earlier on in the video, Cleopatra actually used to spend a lot of her free time bathing here in these very baths that we are bathing in today. So this is a really special place. So think of this place as a Saint-Tropez or a Martha's Vineyard or some really exclusive area for the rich, wealthy, and royalty of the time period. So quick pro tip, if you want to experience some really warm water and not have to deal with the warm or the cold water in the pool, just step off the edge here. You'll get some really nice warm water. So I think it's pretty funny. You come here for the healing thermal baths, but ironically, the surface is so jagged and hard that it really hurts your feet. So I guess you can walk on it, then hop in the pools, but then you gotta get out. So it's like, just seems a little bit funny to me. Next, we're gonna head into the Hierapolis Museum. Check out these sarcophagi. Wow, look at the detail. This here is actually the monumental tomb. It's from the mid first century AD. And this tomb was actually found to be adjacent to the Byzantine door. Statue of a woman. Where, where'd all their heads go? Where are the heads? So can somebody let me know? Why are all the heads chopped off of the statues? There's gotta be a blatantly obvious reason that they're all missing their heads. Looks like we've got another tomb over here. This one is a little bit smaller than its larger counterpart over here, but still impressive nonetheless. So guys, I have to admit, I've been to museums all over the world, but this is my first time ever visiting an outdoor museum. It's pretty cool though. So this area around here is pretty cool. So it looks like they have a bunch of different tombs here. These are all sarcophagi. You can see they've got the different designs. I think I personally like this one a little bit more because it just seems simpler than all of these. I don't know if I'd want to have a bunch of little guys on my tomb. Now this one's actually pretty cool. Marcus Aurelius Diodorus. I have read a lot about you. All right, up next, we are gonna head into the antique pool. And this is how much it costs to enter the antique pool. And if you did happen to forget your bathing suit, they do sell bathing suits on site as well. Tops and bottoms, and then they've got one pieces as well. And for the guys, they've got swim trunks. This UNESCO World Heritage Site once famously served as the spiritual center and spa of the ancient city of Hierapolis. In Cleopatra's day, a Roman temple to Apollo surmounted this pool and the waters at its base were used for hydrotherapy and religious practices. Today, the same waters are filled with the remains of this temple, providing an equally alluring experience to those who visit. I just can't get over how cool this is, guys. I've never seen anything like this before, except at like a theme park. But this is all genuine pieces of column work. It's awesome. And by the way, right next to the pool, there's a ton of restaurants and gift shops. So if you get hungry, this is the place where you're gonna wanna come and eat. There they go. Got a pretty interesting photo shoot happening over here. What do you guys think of that pose? Oh, he's getting it. Hey, he's getting it. I am very intrigued by this photo shoot happening over here. I need some friends who are willing to do this. All my friends are in the States. So anybody in Europe want to do a photo shoot like this, let me know. So while they're in the pool, I figure I'd give you guys a look at the food that they have. So they got burgers, steak, kebab, chicken. Looks like they got meatballs, doner. Got some more doner. 
They've got nuggets. And it is pretty cold today, but they do have ice cream as well. Ooh, you can get a banana split. That sounds good. And they have a full ice cream station over here as well. So if you don't want to get anything too fancy, you can just get the individual scoops. So while they were excavating this land between 2011 and 2014, they ended up finding a sanctuary to the god of the underworld, Pluto, and his bride. And so that's what this area is. And so believe it or not, this cave was considered to be the entrance to the underworld time period they actually led a ton of bulls down into the cave as a sacrifice over my shoulder this cave is actually where the bulls were sacrificed this is actually believed back in the day to be the gateway into hell it's it this is nuts this is insane so the final thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over and check out the amphitheater to actually get to the amphitheater it is a little bit of a hike, so make sure you bring your hiking shoes. We did it. We have made it to the amphitheater, and as you guys can see, this place is gigantic. It's probably one of the steeper amphitheaters that I've ever been to personally, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be like, Trey, there's way steeper amphitheaters than this, but I feel kind of uncomfortable trying to make my way down there, and in fact, you can actually only go to where the wooden gate is for safety reasons, obviously but wow and it has the full stage and this this place is amazing sadly our day is done here at Pamukkale and Hierapolis but we still have one more awesome place to go so let's go check it out I do think I can live in Turkey though obviously because the food's amazing but also because there are so many outdoor activities to do like hiking you can go to the beach and even when it snows you can also snowboard and ski as well. After enjoying our time at Pamukkale and Hierapolis, we decided to check out another important site in the ancient world, Laodicea. Laodicea was a once great center of banking and finance. In fact, it was one of the wealthiest cities in the ancient world. The city was at the crossroads of north and south traffic between Sardis and Perga and east and west traffic from the Euphrates to Ephesus. Laodicea quickly became a rich city, rich enough to be able to rebuild itself without outside help after the destructive earthquake of 60 AD. <laughs> Golden! All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us. We had another fun-filled, amazing day. We are about three hours from our hotel, so we have a little bit of a drive back, but this day was 100% worth it. And if you can, try to make the journey out here because it is worth it 100%. So as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up as it does help the channel in so many ways. Thank you guys for the continued love and support. We still have another five days here in Turkey, so thank you. Mahalo for watching.